years, we actually expanded from beginning with nine titles to um, publishing our entire front list each month in ebook format. So it's about 120 titles per month. So we've quickly built our digital program, and we really, we really feel that's an important part of our publishing <coughs> program. We've uh, narrowed down really kind of five key benefits. I feel very loud. Okay. Five key benefits to the ebooks uh, for ourselves and our, our, our company. So, really, ebooks are great at allowing you to experiment. Um, you can try a different editorial, you can use your editorial different ways, you can enhance current editorial, um, and all of it in a relatively low cost way. Also, for us, speed to market is really important. I mean, in the digital space, if you're, if you're not in there quickly, you might as well not be in there at all. Things are changing all, day by day. Um, and the best part is, too, if you're experimenting with something new, um, <coughs> consumer feedback is, is fairly immediate. And in our case, they're, they are a very vocal audience, and they let you know right away if something is not to their liking or how you could be perhaps improving on it. So we actually appreciate that. Um, and ebooks are also a great way to get authors involved into the digital space, something that can often seem a little bit overwhelming and intimidating. Um, but you know, books are what they know, so getting them in with ebooks is, is a great way. And it's a new way to market books in general. It's much easier for sampling, you can get a, a, a wider spread, and you can sample in different ways. So in 2007, as we're well on our way to being uh, front list, we took a look at the ebook market and tried to figure out, so now that we're doing all of our regular books in ebook format, what do we do next? So we figured we'd move on to ebook only editorial. So we have three products currently that are published on a regular basis <coughs> in ebook only format, and uh, they are the Spice Briefs, the Nocturne Bites, and the Historical Undone There. Um, really, we wanted to make ebooks attractive, kind of give ebooks an advantage over the print book for some of the reluctant uh, romance readers who sometimes found the hurdles to t adapting to ebooks a little bit overwhelming. Um, and nothing stands between romance readers and a happy ending, so we figured if we give them more, <laughs> this is the way to get them on board. Um, not to mention romance readers, as somebody mentioned earlier today, are one of the highest volume readers out there. So frankly, giving them more of the editorial that they love it only benefits everyone. Um, so that brings me actually to how we kind of made our product choices. We did begin with Spice Briefs in August 2007. Erotic fiction is very popular online, as a lot of people know. Um, for a lot of obvious reasons, nobody knows what you're reading. And in our case, we did have a Spice imprint that was releasing one title every other month. And we felt that uh, there was perhaps a gap in the market that we could be addressing. So we felt like moving on with Spice Briefs, short erotic fiction stories, two titles a month was the way to go. And uh, our two launch titles were a huge success, and we've actually built a strong following since then. So that then made us think about what we could be doing next. We have a series called Silhouette Nocturne, and that's two titles a month of paranormal romance. Um, but paranormal romance, as anybody else in the ebook world knows, is, is huge. So we thought we should be giving them more of the paranormal romance. So we decided to have uh, another brand of ebook shorts with our Nocturne Bites. And we launched one title a month in May 2008, and we're now currently up to two titles a month. And then finally, uh, sexy historicals are definitely making a, a mark in the marketplace in ebooks. And we do have our Harlequin historical line, which is four or six <coughs> titles a month. Um, but we felt we could perhaps up a notch on the sexy factor. So therefore, we uh, launched Historical Undone in <coughs> November 2008. We mm. launched actually with four titles a month. One thing that we had learned from the previous launches was that if you're going to draw people in and give them something to read, you've got to make sure you have more for them to read. So we were out there uh, promoting four titles. That way, when they enjoyed it and loved it, there's plenty for them to come back to right away. So we're not just satisfying readers' needs for more books. We're also drawing them into our brands and authors through these products. Um, all three products are brand extensions of other um, <coughs> books that we publish. Um, so readers can actually follow authors and miniseries from the digital-only titles through to the print books as well. Um, each title is standalone, so they can be read individually, but they also can bridge the gap when there's a miniseries going on and authors, uh, readers don't want to wait for the author's next book to come out. Um, they're priced in such a way at $2.99 each that actually makes them a, a really good trial option for readers who may have heard of the author, may have heard of the product, and maybe even just never really tried an ebook before, but it's, it's a small investment to make, and then, and then they're hooked. Um, and it's also a way to grow individual authors and help individual authors find new authors, uh, new audiences. Following the release of Undone, actually, in November 2008, Nicola Kornick, who was one of our launch authors, uh, sort of found a whole sea of new fans. Um, as I've included in the quote at the top of the slide, um, it actually goes on further to say that this reader then discovered, went online and found all the previous Nicola Kornick titles out there and uh, bought each and every one. And she couldn't wait for the next title to come out. So this is exactly what we're hoping that these products will help do. 
It's also no accident that um, Undone really hit big initially with um, the online crowd because our authors were out there themselves promoting it. They actually joined forces and did a blog tour um, and we were happy to give them coupon codes or anything that we could help them um, cover, cover images and so forth so they could go out there and promote as well, which is something they were thrilled to do. And it was a way for them to kind of branch out in the digital space. Um, speed of everything, as we've mentioned before, and actually Undone was our fast, fastest launch to date. We were talking about it in September 2008 and we launched it in November 2008. So really, I mean, I think in the e-books, if you, if you cling to the timelines of traditional publishing, then the opportunity is gone in a lot of cases. And we find these products are actually also a great means of discovering new authors uh, quickly. The submission, the submission process is electronic. So it moves through the editorial department quicker. Um, they can make decisions faster. They can get back to authors who can then go back and perhaps revisit their manuscripts and send them in again. Um, and in both Spice Briefs and Nocturne Bites, we've actually found authors that have begun within these short um, e-books and moved on to our Spice and our Silhouette Nocturne lines as well. So now they're right for both. And in fact, we've actually discovered over four authors in the past two years. Um, and the best thing is that the experimentation that we're allowed to, that we're able to do within these products can also help you find new authors. So for example, with the historical undone, we've broadened the time range parameters that we currently have within the Harlequin historical line. So we're willing to look at a, a wider range of history. Um, we're actually also willing to take submissions that have paranormal elements, so you can mix your paranormal and your history together. Um, and the, the best part about that too is that if, the, if that new element to your editorial catches fires with fire with your readers, then you can launch it into print with a much lower risk because you know you've already got that interest there. Um, and if it doesn't, well, it didn't cost us as much as it would have if we tried it in print first. Um, ebooks also can work to leverage, you can leverage your ebooks for your print side as well. Um, this spring, we released our first print anthologies for Spice Reefs and Nocturne Bites. The Spice Reefs became a, a collection of Spice Reefs <coughs> called Naughty Bit, and uh, the Nocturne Bites became Midnight Cravings. So this kind of takes the editorial full circle. So we're taking the people from the ebook world and taking them out to the print and then taking them back in because they um, obviously it's heavily promoted that these are collections of books that they can find online. <coughs> so once we've kind of tackled the, the three different series, if you will, that we wanted to do in ebook only format, we sort of looked at the single title side of the business and how we could perhaps be looking at uh, ebooks for those. And last winter, there was huge buzz around the office about uh, an upcoming Gina Showalter trilogy, Lords of the Underworld. It was uh, paranormal, it was sexy, and of course it was going to be perfect for the ebook audience. So what we did was we approached her and we asked her if she'd be willing to write a prequel to that trilogy that we could release exclusive, exclusively in ebook a month before it actually went on, the trilogy itself went on sale. She's great about that kind of thing, so she said sure. Uh, it was released in April for $2.99, and it immediately was a, a huge hit with all of our e-tailers and with our audience who were writing to us to find out when the next books were coming and how many were coming. Um, it sold extremely well, not just in advance of the trilogy, but it continued to find an audience once the trilogy had been published. So uh, it wasn't just a one-hit wonder, if you will. As a result, we've, uh, we've looked at how we can expand this sort of these connected shorts when it makes sense and do them in other cases. For example, we've just released uh, an epilogue to Gina Showalter's Atlantis trilogy that was uh, just out from January through to March. So it kind of continues that story for people who weren't ready to let go. And we're looking at other opportunities where, for one reason or another, an author may have connected a tutorial, but it's not coming out in subsequent months. So possibly um, having other stories that will fill that gap for readers who, and keep the interest there. The fact that we can move so quickly in getting the e-books to market is actually really a benefit with these titles. It allows us to work within author schedules. Um, we can produce them in a cost-effective way. In many cases, they are, in fact, stock art. They're not uh, part of our regular cover process. Um, so it cuts the lead time in getting them into the marketplace. And as Amy will get into a little bit later with some of her things, authors are really fantastic innovators, and by offering them the opportunity to approach their series in a different way, they bring a ton to the table. Um, they expand series that need more closure, or the ones that readers just aren't prepared to be finished with yet. And so uh, we'll be continuing to do more of these uh, shorts. Sampling has always been really important with Harlequin. Uh, we're big proponents of sampling our editorial and drawing people in and we're not afraid to give away some of the editorial to get them to come back and enjoy the rest of the editorial. Um, so ebooks allow us to do that in a lot of different ways. Price points, of course, whether they're free or significantly less than other titles, will help uh, encourage readers to try the editorial and actually turn them into buyers and hopefully they'll be addicted for life. Um, we've just actually released this Blaze short story here um, to kind of reintroduce people to the Harlequin Blaze product line. 
It's written by one of the authors for Harlequin Blaze. It's got the branding that they would find on a normal Harlequin Blaze book. So it's really a true indicator of what they would find within that series. Um, and again, that's uh, free in some places and $1.99 in others. So once we kind of tried several variations of the digital shorts with uh, the series and the single title, then we decided to experiment with something else again. So right around Christmas, we were kind of trying to consider what we might do for Valentine's Day. And uh, we'd, already, we'd already decided that uh, ebooks were a great way to involve readers um, in a way that print just can't let you do, or at least not within the same short time frame. And over the past 10 years, we've built a strong relationship with our readers through our thriving community and the various blogs that we have dedicated to several of our products or genres. And they've provided tons of comments and insights and feedback during that time frame. And we thought, given that it's our anniversary year, one of the things that we could do was uh, let them in on the action as a way of thanking them for their continued support and their continued feedback. So we compiled 60s reader short story, reader stories, thoughts, insights, along with those of authors as well, to create a collectible <coughs> ebook. We threw in an online read story just so that they would have a little extra something to read. And really, we just felt like it was a way to solidify the connection between ourselves, our readers, and our authors as a, a three-way. Um, and as you can see, over the past two years, we've really kind of taken the speed of the digital world and experimented, built on the feedback from our consumers, and worked with authors to really embrace new editorial opportunities um, and new way to market them. So Amy's just going to take you through one of our other programs now. Hi, so once again, I'm Amy Wilkins, Digital Production Coordinator. And I'm going to tell you about a couple other uh, really great, exciting digital products that we do. The first being the Enriched eBooks. And these are basically digital books that include extra content that is not available in print. And a common comparison that we use is to director's cut DVDs or DVD extras. So often print books do contain some sort of extra material, whether it is maps and fantasy novels or questions for discussion on, um, for book clubs. But with eBooks, you can really take this a step further. Uh, we're not limited uh, by printing costs or having a set number of pages, so you can add almost any, uh, anything that you want. You can also do unique things like adding full color images that would be just too expensive to print. And as technology develops, ebooks have the potential to add any number of multimedia. Um, some things we're looking at is audio and video, and maybe even in the future we could add games directly in ebook files. So why would Harlequin take the time to add sort of extra content to our ebooks? Well, one of the things we believe is that a major hurdle in the adoption of ebooks is just getting people to try it. We hear all the time that people are still attached to the physical experience of reading. They even like the smell of books. But we also hear a lot from our readers that once they do try an ebook, they become hooked on the format because of all the benefits that it offers. So we feel that by offering something unique that they can't get in a print book, it could be that one thing that takes a print reader into an ebook reader. Um, also, enriching ebooks adds value. Um, I think we all know um, some of the questions about pricing going on right now. And there is a perception that because books are digital, they should be much cheaper than print. Um, whether that's true or not, I won't even get into, but um, we can help face that um, hesitation that <coughs> might be holding people back from trying ebooks by offering them something that they can't get anywhere else. Uh, lastly, it's another way to market books by just having another feature that we can promote. So that being said, enrichment won't necessarily work for all of our titles. And there are basically three considerations that we take into account when we select our enriched titles. The first being that the editorial will lend itself well to enrichment. Uh, secondly, the title is from a popular authors or series that we think will get attention from readers and from um, popular bloggers in the media. And three, if we know the author or another department in our company um, has some sort of material that we can gain easily and for free that we can use. So, and we'll see how these three strategies come into play with um, the different ebooks that we've done so far. The first being Unmasked, which is up on the screen right now. And that was released in July of 2008. We chose this book for two reasons. First of all, Nicola Kornick is a popular author. She was also one of the um, Undone authors that Adine mentioned. Second, it's a historical romance, which offers a lot of historical um, information that we can use. Um, historical terms, events, and people are up here in this book. And we get, it had a clear opportunity to enrich it by adding, embedding ebooks into the file itself. So if the reader wants to know more about that particular aspect, they can just click the link um, as long as they're on um, a web, um, a, um, a device that has that web application. And they can find out more about it and really immerse themselves into the reading experience and the world of the novel. We also added some copyright free images. So as with the images and the links, these were absolutely free to add. 
the only real investment we had with this book was the time to source the material um, and also the conversion itself. We were still in the investigation phase and the experimentation phase with this one, so we only did one format, um, being Adobe, which was our most popular selling format, and it only went to limited retailers. Our next one is uh, called Hotly Bedded, Conveniently Wedded. <laughs> uh, this one came out in July 2009. It's from our very popular Harlequin Presents line. And this is kind of the line that most people think about when they think of Harlequin. It's what you see in the grocery stores or in Shopper's Drug Mart. Um, it's the great classic romance with exotic settings and powerful alpha heroes. So we chose this one because it's from um, this incredibly popular line, which is our best-selling around the world and also in ebook format. And also, <coughs> it did have a lot to enrich. Um, as with Unmasked, um, there was a lot of material in there. The Hero and Heroine travel around quite a lot and visit important landmarks. Um, they also, uh, the Hero and Heroine, are also work in archaeology, so it brings in a lot of Roman history and, and English history as well. So as with Unmasked, we use this material by adding over 130 hyperlinks to this text. And let me tell you, that took quite a lot of time for me to research all those 130 links. Um, the book itself is in print format. It's only 192 pages, so that's about a link every page and a half. Um, one thing that we did new with this book is we involved the author. Um, we previously had the idea that um, enriching ebooks was something that we could do solely in-house, but um, as Mala Valiker, who's our director of digital content, learned as she went to writers' conferences, uh, that the writers were really interested in these enriched ebooks. Um, they had a lot of great ideas for what they can include, and it was also a bit of keeping control of their product. So I personally went on to Kate Hardy, who's the author of this book, I went to her website, and I saw that she had her own extra material that she was using for, uh, on her website for promotion. She had a recipe of a dish that was mentioned in the book, and she also had a little explanation about why she chose um, the occupations that her characters had. So I simply reached out to her. I explained to her um, the concept of the Enriched ebook. What are the benefits? And she very readily jumped on board, offered us the um, enriched the, the content from the website, and also she sent us some photographs um, that are related to the story that we use for free. And there you have an enriched ebook. So we also included, um, besides getting the author involved, we also took into account reader feedback from the first version that we did. And this is really um, in relation to the, how we treated the links. In Unmasked, we did buttons at the, in the margins because we thought we didn't want to obscure the reader, uh, we didn't want them to be too obtrusive while the reader was reading the actual book. But one piece of feedback we, that we heard was that readers um, are used to reading on screen, on blogs and on websites where the actual word is hyperlinked. So, and they found it easier because you would, they would know exactly what they were being taken to. So we did adapt it um, right in the very next edition. We were able to incorporate that feedback very quickly. Oops, I need to go back. I missed the second one, Silent in the Sanctuary, which came out in February 2009. Again, we involved the author very heavily in this one. And it's, this is actually different from um, Holly Bedded, Conveniently Wedded, in that this material was brand new and really is not available anywhere else. Um, the author, Deanna Rayburn, is really great about promotion, especially when it comes to new things from technology. And we have a great relationship with her, so she was very willing to, to get on board and write um, a new, I think there's a recipe, there's <coughs> a letter from a character, that kind of thing. And we also included material in-house uh, with screenshots from an event we had in Second Life with Deanna Rayburn. Again, she's very good with promotion. Um, and we included um, some promotion for the next book in her series, which is called Silent on the Moor, also available in Enriched Edition, um, by offering a teaser chapter for that and a little note that the next book would be available in an e Enriched ebook format. So if the readers liked what they see here, they would hopefully go out and buy the next one. Um, by this point in, in February, uh, we are fully confident in our process that we can do Enriched ebooks. And um, so, uh, we decided to go with just having the enriched edition. We d don't have a regular version, unlike Hotly Better and Communion Wedded and um, Unmasked, we had a regular edition and an enriched one, um, but by now we were confident that we could just do the one, and also it made a lot more sense since, you know, why pay to convert a book twice, and it was also a lot less confusing for our customers and for our vendors. Next we have our first series of enriched ebooks, which is the Montana Creed series by uh, best-selling author Linda Lale Miller. Um, this series does include a few uh, author 
provided content, but the main feature um, of the ebooks is that we Im added images and a lot of images. Our art department had a ton of great images left over from the cover shoots that very likely would have gone completely to waste. Um, but we were able to take them for free and incorporate the images throughout each book. And this is really a perfect example of what you can do in ebooks that you can't do in print. Um, for Harlequin, the vast majority of our books, almost 100%, I'd say, are mass market, black and white. We could not put the pictures in there, and if we did, they would not even begin to do them justice, and full color printing is expensive. Um, it's also an example about how we can evolve the non-digital parts of our company into the digital space. So far, um, we've, been, we've mentioned um, getting authors involved in this sphere slowly, um, but ebooks are also a great way to get other departments thinking about what they can do with the content that they already have, or perhaps acquire new content in order to add more value for the customer, promote their books, and things like that. Um, I would also like to point out with these books, and again with the last couple, that they come out month to month, and you can really see how we're refining our strategy with each book. It moves incredibly quickly um, because we do get feedback so quickly and we're learning from our own experiences about what we need to adapt and change. As we move forward, Harlequin will continue to experiment with new forms of content for an enriched ebook. And some of the ones we have coming up include character profiles, teaser chapters, deleted scenes, alternate endings, and the prequel stories. Um, the prequel story is actually an interesting uh, story. Um, one of our authors had written up a little, kind of like a prologue or a prequel, um, and she sent it to us almost out of the blue saying, I have written this, can you use it anywhere? Um, it's a little similar to our uh, prequel stories that Aideen mentioned, but this one was shorter and it, was more, it doesn't really stand alone. So we thought, well, why don't we make it into an enriched ebook? And we actually contacted her back and said, well, we'd love to. Do you have anything else you can use? And she said, sure. So she sent us some more content. And within a few weeks, we had an enriched ebook just from that author's own impetus, really. I just kind of trail off at the end with Anne Moore because um, really there's no way to know where we're going. As I mentioned, we're going so quickly and things are changing so rapidly. Authors are constantly coming up with great ideas and as technology develops, who knows what will be. If this is how far we got since our first enriched ebook in July 2008, you can just imagine where we'll be at the end of the year. Um, I also like to mention, as, uh, as you noticed a lot, I said we got this content for free. Our budget for the enriched ebooks is basically our conversion cost, which would be the same as converting a regular book and also a portion of my salary since I work on this. And that's it. Our, our digital content team is five people also. It's not, even though Harlequin's a big company, or the digital content department is small, the main investment in this is not cost, it's mostly time. Um, and if you're willing to take that time to invest in experimenting with things like that, you can really get something unique and fun. And certainly we do some great things, but it's certainly possible to start on a smaller scale. We're adding special BPAs to um, promote other books, adding teaser chapters, things like that. So as many of our other speakers have said, don't be afraid to experiment. It's really fun and can go in incredible ways very quickly. Briefly, I just wanted to talk about the response that we got to these enriched eBooks, which was amazing. Um, we did get some media attention because Harlequin does have a reputation of being an innovator, partly because we, you know, we do do amazing things, and also because many people don't expect it from this company that produces romance novels with the vast majority of our readers being women. Um, however, uh, we also have, we know from our readers and from uh, romance bloggers that they are interested in technology <coughs> and, ex and experiencing their books in new and exciting ways. Um, we also have a great relationship with many bloggers online and through the eharlequin.com community, which gave us an amazing opportunity to promote these books. Um, that was posted in many different places. As you can see, this is just a small sample. Um, and that's where we got many of our great feedback as well. I'm not going to read all those quotes, but I just wanted to point out the middle one, which is from um, our author Ellen Hartman on the eHarlequin community, where she said, um, I'm ashamed to admit I've never read an ebook, but this is definitely incentive enough to make me take a shot. That prequel story that I mentioned, where the author sent it out of the blue, that was Ellen Hartman. So back in July 2008, she went from never having read an ebook, never having heard of the concept to enriched ebook, to having a rich ebook all on her own because she was really embraced the technology and what was possible and wanted to do that for her own story. Another ebook exclusive product that Harlequin produces is our ebook bundles, which are basically ebook anthologies that do not exist in print. 
Um, they also come with their own benefits. First, they like the Enriched eBooks. They're not limited by page count or print cost. So they can be quite large. I think the largest one that we ever did was uh, contained 11 full-length books in one file. Um, as with Enriched eBooks, it also gives us an opportunity to use backlist and bonus materials in new ways and to get people interested not just in one book, but in a whole series of connected books. Also, they're very convenient for readers. If they're looking for several books that are, are connected in some way, they can find it easily in, in one download. It's not just publishers that are doing bundles. Um, we've also seen on other vendors, such as Diesel, where they're creating their own bundles um, with themed editorial that um, comes from several different publishers as well. And to date, Harlequin has produced more than 300 bundles. Um, and the different types of bundles best demonstrate our strategy behind these products. The first two types are author-led, and uh, which are based around a single author, and mini-series bundle, which can contain connected stories um, that can include various authors and from books from various imprints that we produce. These formats help readers find authors' complete mini-series and backlist titles that are not available in print, um, and they don't have to go searching for them, trolling the internet, trying to find that one book that they're missing. They can get it all just in one file. Um, for example, the Nancy Holder um, book that's under mini-series over there, um, that's actually her gifted series started out in Silhouette Bombshell, which is an imprint that we no longer produce. It continued on in Silhouette Nocturne, and there was another story in Nocturne Bites. So in this bundle, they can get all five stories in a really convenient format, get stories that they might have missed otherwise. Um, and this is especially um, useful for a series that started before Harlequin started the print program. We find that um, readers find a later story in ebook and then they want to go back and read the rest so we can provide that for them. They also offer good value since uh, my bundles are discounted even slightly more than our regular ebooks um, since they're backlist titles and we'll encourage readers to buy multiple books. As with our enriched ebook, not every series or author will be a good fit for bundling. Uh, we mainly pick either uh, um, best-selling authors or mini-series that we know readers will want to pick up multiple books for. Um, titles that are requested by readers, um, as long as we think you know, there's enough demand and it's not just those one or two people who are emailing us that are going to go out and buy it. Um, sales, or it's, for example, if, a pop, if an author is popular now, we can go back and bundle um, their backlist to capitalize on their current success. And it also offer, um, offers promotional opportunities for continuing miniseries. So for example, if a new installment's coming out, we could go back and bundle the first few in the series so either readers can catch up and then go buy that, for that new installment, or readers who are finding the new installment can go back and read the previous books as well. Other type of bundles we have are the theme bundles, which are based around a popular plot or character type that we know readers are interested <laughs> in. So again, giving them more of what they want. Here's Italians and their brides. Um, we can also do new anthologies. Um, most of the previous bundles I've mentioned um, are from books that are available in print individually, um, but we also do totally customizable bundles. So for this Red Hot Holiday bundle that's open and a few others that we do, we actually took novellas from old print uh, anthologies, picked out the ones by the top authors or had the best editorial, and combined them in brand new ways that would be more appealing for our readers. Um, we can also add new content beyond the story to add a value and appeal for the readers. Um, for example, we have another one that's coming out very soon uh, called The Body Movers, books one to three by Stephanie Bond. And it includes the first three novels in her series along with a reading guide that she wrote and a short story that she had for our website. And this reading guide and the short story um, are not included into the price. And since the bundle is discounted anyway, they're actually getting three full novels, the reading guide and a bonus story, all for the price of less than three bundles, uh, three books. And our last type of bundle is our one-click buys, which we produce um, three or four every month uh, with our best-selling passion series, which are Silhouette Desire, Harlequin Presents, and Harlequin Blaze. Um, these lines come up with a set number of books each month. Um, Blaze and uh, Desire are six, and Presents is eight. And we have really loyal customers for these lines, and also they're the most voracious readers, and they tend to buy the same books every month. So this was really came out of the idea of functionality and convenience for our reader. Um, we had no add all to cart type button, so we created bundles where they can get all of their books that they would buy in a single uh, download, which was very convenient for them. <coughs> it's also a good value again and encourages readers to buy all the books in that month's uh, series. Um, maybe they might not have bought one or two, but by offering this convenience and the discount, it encourages them to go ahead and buy the bundle at a slightly higher price point. 
We can also do this type of bundle because we have very loyal readers who want all the books in the popular series. Um, we have tried this kind of on one-offs with a few other ones that didn't quite do as well, but as ebooks continue to become more and more popular, it's something that we'll look at for our other series as well and revisit. Again, just, I went too far. And, <laughs> and again, uh, we're always just refining our strategy when it comes to this type of thing. Reader feedback is very important. Blogger feedback is very important. Um, Harlequin has taken many years to develop these great relationships um, so that we can give readers more of what they want and in a way that we want. And now it's back to Aideen. Okay, so Amy already showed you my slide. Um, so, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so just briefly looking at our, talking about our backlist library. Um, so really I think if you're going to reach out to readers and ask them what it is that they want and what you can do for them, um, you better be sort of seen to respond to that and act on that quickly, otherwise the whole relationship sort of falls flat. Um, so luckily ebooks allow us the flexibility to do that and do it in a faster way. And one way we've been doing that is through our expansion of our backlist. Uh, we kind of began that a little bit with the bundles and doing it with various authors and things. We're, but really as more and more readers are, are adopting uh, ebooks, they're wanting more and more books and a larger variety that they can uh, read so they can add to their libraries. So really they're looking for the big name authors that they already love. They're looking for upcoming authors that they may have read one or two of their newer titles and want to read everything that they can from the past in ebook. Um, and also ones that have sort of connected editorial series that uh, may have been ongoing for years in some form or another so they've caught it at a later date and they want to get back to some of the earlier titles. So those have really been our focus as we sort of look at how we can expand our backlist. And um, we also have the, the luck of having a, the series that we write and they've been around, a lot of them have been around for a number of years and have a number of titles and have a number of strong authors within them. Um, so we've actually been sort of going back and sourcing titles from our series that we can bring into backlist as well for those uh, voracious readers. Um, so just in closing, I mean, I think for us really, it's, it's a matter of being creative with your content, trying to think of different ways that you can uh, evolve that content and do different things with it. I mean, as Amy mentioned, when you reach out to the authors, that you'd be surprised how often they're willing to try something and, and jump in and come up with ideas of their own. And really all you can do is ask. If they say no, they say no. Um, you also sh we find it very valuable to be visiting blogs as well and blogging ourselves and not just on our own site, our own community, but out there on other blogs so that we can uh, be in contact with people. And you know, they're only too happy to give both um, praise and criticism, which is fine. It helps us evolve our program even better. And it doesn't require necessarily a huge financial investment. If you've got it, great. If you don't, you can still be doing smaller things. You're trying on a solid, smaller scale that will perhaps uh, someday um, lead to people being willing to invest on a larger level when you kind of prove what you can do on a small, small, small stage. So that's really it in terms of what we had to say. Did anybody have any questions? Or? Okay. Thanks.